Hello, I'm Frank Marchlinski from the University of Pennsylvania. Today I'm serving the role of as a deputy editor for the Jack EP to interview Dr. Matt Hyman and talk about a paper that is uh, being published in uh, Jack EP and being presented at the Heart Rhythm Society meetings. Uh, welcome, Matt. Matt is a, a, a electrophysiologist at the University of Pennsylvania. He directs our innovation activities and um, for the program, and he's an associate professor of medicine at Penn. And he's today is going to be talking about his uh, scientific effort and looking at CO2 insufflation, safety and efficacy for epicardial access compared to standard epicardial access uh, approach. So, Matt, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thanks for for having me. And this, yeah. is, this is some work that we're actually really excited about. Um, and so the title of the study is a comparison, I'm sorry, the safety and efficacy of epicardial CO2 insufflation compared to conventional epicardial access techniques. And uh, you know, for a long time, as you know, um, one of the most challenging parts of a ventricular tachycardia ablation is gaining access to the epicardial space. And that's because what we're trying to do is frequently taking a needle and inserting it into that very small potential space between the epicardium and the pericardium. Now, recently there's been a lot of work on taking a small catheter and intentionally perforating the coronary venous system to insufflate carbon dioxide, thereby separating that pericardium and epicardium and potentially improving the safety and efficacy of epicardial access. And so we were very interested to see, looking at a big center, a high volume center like Penn, if we uh, saw that sort of signature, saw that sort of um, uh, potential for safety. And so we looked back over the last three years at our own experience. We saw that there were 80 patients who had conventional epicardial access techniques used, meaning a dry tap. Um, and there were 73 patients in whom we had uh, used epicardial CO2. And when we compared these two groups and looked at them, what we saw was that there was a significant reduction in bleeding events in those patients in whom epicardial CO2 is used. There were 14 patients with bleeding events in the conventional epicardial access arm, but only four in the epicardial CO2 arm. And the other thing that was quite impressive was that there were uh, six major complications in the conventional epicardial access arm and zero major complications in the epicardial CO2 group. So we think this shows that this is a, a very nice tool to have you know, in your, in your kit. And whenever you're um, considering epicardial access, we think this is something that, that people should be considering. That's really quite impressive because it's a dramatic reduction in bleeding and overall complications. And just in terms of you think that it's, you know, it's already been looks at, taken over by this, you know, the European community in terms of their use as a standard approach for epicardial access, at least in a lot of centers. What do you think? Is this going to be the technique that's going to be used as part of the standard? Do you think you're going to be selective in terms of the patient population, or this be more broadly used in the general patient population in whom you're thinking about epicardial access? Uh, so I think this is going to lead to sort of a democratization of epicardial access. I think it's going to make the technique of epicardial access at the time of ventricular tachycardia ablation more accessible to operators who might not have felt comfortable with the technical difficulty and the challenge. So I think this is gonna make um, more patients have the, the ability to get an epicardial ablation who need it and make it so it's less of a specialized center technique. And so I, I think you're gonna see this spread very broadly going forward. Um, and for, I mean, personally, I'm using it in almost every epicardial access I use yeah. because the, I just again, the safety seems to be there and the stress level of getting epicardial access comes down when you know you have that safety margin. Well, I want to suggest that the reader go online. The paper's well illustrated. We'll show some good examples of the technique and technology. So thanks, Matt, for sharing this information Yeah, thank with you us. for having me.